Okay, I want to talk about uh, some of the math and physics involved in roller coaster loops. Yay! So uh, we'll call this um, roller coaster loop physics. Okay, so to, uh, to remind ourselves, let's set up a little loop here and just quickly remind ourselves about um, what we already know. Look at that, that's a nice looking loop. I think we can all agree. Um, okay, so the first thing we'll talk about is, all right, like, let's say I have a, all right, so if, uh, if you want to have this ball roll through the loop, you have to understand just a little bit about uh, the physics of that. And we have covered this before, but let's, uh, let's just do a quick review, okay? So its velocity, if it wants to make it through, at the top um, has to be such that, well, if it's the minimum velocity, gravity is just equal to the centripetal force, right? So gravity is providing at the top of the loop an amount of force equal to centripetal force, okay? So in other words, mg is providing exactly the centripetal force needed, okay? And if you go any slower than that, then gravity is going to be greater than the centripetal force that you need, and your ball is going to follow a tighter arc, aka it's going to fall off the circle. If you go faster than this minimum velocity, well, no problem, because what will happen is gravity will provide most of the centripetal force, or some of the centripetal force, and then like the normal force with the loop itself will provide the rest. Okay, so that's the concept here. Now clearly mass doesn't matter, and we rearrange, we get g times r, so we would get then that this critical velocity is equal to root gr. Okay, so that's the velocity we have to have at the top of the loop so that the ball does not fall off. We go faster, no problem, it'll stay on the loop, right? You don't want to go insanely fast, especially if this represents a roller coaster car, because then people will like get crushed and pull lots of cheese and so on. But we're just saying that this is the minimum, okay? Faster is fine. Okay, so now, the first thing we want to do is, let's say we're making a roller coaster, and we want to figure out, well, how can I have a roller coaster go around a loop of some given radius, okay? So some given radius R. Um, just do this. Okay, we'll call that R. And make it through the loop. In other words, how high up this, you know, area here, how high up this, you know, ramp, I guess, do we have to put the ball so that we know it's just going to make the loop? Now, a couple of caveats here. What? We're going to ignore friction. Friction is going to be ignored. Um, in real life, you can't do that. All right. So if you want to include friction, you can either figure it out and add that much on, or you can, like, give yourself, like, a little bit of a safety lift so you go higher. Now, the idea here, of course, is that as the ball rolls down, okay, it gains velocity, right? It gains kinetic energy by losing gravitational potential energy. It has to have enough velocity to roll down, make it up to this height, and then continue through the loop. Does that make sense? So as it goes up this loop, it's going to slow down, right? So we have to make sure that it still has enough velocity at the top of this loop so that it obeys this little formula right here. All right, so now let's talk about this. So we got to use energy concepts in order to figure this out. So you have to give it gravitational potential such that when it reaches the top of this loop, it supply, this gravity supplied two things. One, an EK, where the velocity part is equal to this, right? Plus some new gravitational potential energy at the top of the loop. Does that make sense? So what we'll say then is we'll say that the input EG has to supply all of the energy to both have enough EK to have be at the critical velocity at the top and um, to get you to the top to begin with. If we just let the ball go from the height of the loop, when it gets to the top, what would its velocity be? It would be zero, right? It would just turn its EG into EK and then back into EG. It would be zero at the top and would fall off the loop, okay? So we know clearly it's going to have to be let go from higher than the top of the loop. So the first thing let's talk about here is what height do we really have here? Well, a radius is only half the loop, 
So we need, you know, a height of two R's near the top. So let's start filling things in. Okay. So over on the left side, EG is equal to MGH. Okay. And then that has to supply one half MV squared plus MG times two R over here. So, uh, so now we can, uh, we can work on this, right? So we see that in every iteration, we've got M. But actually, before we even do that, let's take a look at this, right? So the velocity that we need at the top of the loop is the critical velocity. So let's substitute in the critical velocity for this V right here and see what we get then. So you've got MGH equals 1 half M. Now it's root GR squared plus MG times 2R, right? Because we need 2 times the height to get the, um, not 2 times the height, 2 times the radius to get the height. And then we're going to see, okay, we're squaring a square root. Okay. Aha. Now look what disappears in every, in every one of these things. We can get rid of mg, mg, and mg. And now we get this magic. You gotta let that thing go. Oops, there's a half on there. There we go. Okay, so there's a truth about roller coaster loops. Um, if you ignore friction, okay, the minimum drop height is two and a half times the radius of the loop. Okay, so you gotta put this guy up at an R plus an R plus a half R. And then it'll just have the critical velocity at the top of the loop. In real life, of course, um, there's going to be some friction. There's going to be one other thing about actual roller coasters that's a little bit different than the way we have this. So have you ever seen a roller coaster with a perfectly spherical loop on it? No. They actually have more um, elliptical loops. And I'm going to ask you why you think that is. So a real roller coaster loop looks more like that. Why does it look like that? Okay, so let's just talk about this whole ellipse thing. So here's a picture of a pretty typical roller coaster loop. And obviously when you're designing it, you want you want your loop to be high. You want your roller coaster to look pretty impressive. Um, but let's just examine, uh, if I can here, where our radius would be. So if you look here, right, you have a really wide arc of a circle, super wide. Like your radius is for that circle is going to be like way up over here somewhere. But as you look, that circle compacts into a much tighter loop here. And, you know, the radius is maybe only like, you know, a quarter or whatever of, of whatever it was down here. Okay. So this allows you to have um, a fairly or a much taller um, loop than you would if it was a perfectly circular loop the whole time. Now, the way that I like to kind of think about that. It's just this. Um, so if FC is being provided by gravity, right, um, and then you have, you know, a more of a round circular loop, as you come up here, okay, if you are not going fast enough, right, so remember mg equals mv over r, mv squared over r. Um, if your velocity falls lower, well, what ends up happening is you have a higher mg than necessary. All right, so what that also does is it drives down the radius around which your car is going to travel. So what this would result in is if you go too slow through a loop, gravity is pulling too hard on you, and it's making the radius of your travel over the top of the loop smaller. So this builds in for that, essentially. If you reduce the radius at the top, okay, you can come through with lower speed than you could with a perfectly spherical object. So you can actually end up making a roller coaster loop much higher and therefore have it be much more impressive for people looking and waiting for the ride than you would if you made it perfectly circular and you know the whole loop could only have been like this high right do you see so the whole loop could only have been this high you have to take it and move it right down here and these guys are like oh that's boring it's just a tiny loop i don't want to go on that so a way around that is make it an ellipse make it really tall which is have a narrower um, radius at the top okay so there we go Here's our magic little formula for that. Now let's do one more.
one more example. And again, we'll we'll deal with circles since we've been studying circles. We won't deal with ellipses. No, we'll just leave that ellipse there for now. Okay, so apparently some people didn't quite understand my explanation, which I thought was half decent. So just before we leave this, I want to look at this shape of loop here, which I've learned is called a clothoid, not necessarily an ellipse. I've never heard that word before, but whatever. Okay, so if you look, um, if we're looking at this wall of the loop, which is the same as this wall of the loop, uh, the radius would be this long, whereas at the top of the loop, the radius of this circle is, is much smaller. So we've got r, and we'll call this like r prime. We say like r prime is much larger than r, okay? So through a smaller loop right here, um, gravity is able to provide the centripetal force through a smaller loop at a slower velocity. So if you want to compare that to this drawing here, we can just kind of pull it on top and say, ah, okay, kind of more or less matches that. Small radius at the top, large radius on the in, you know, the intake here, um, and therefore we can have, like I said, a taller loop than we could with just a pure, purely circular um, loop. So that's why you get this elliptical or clothoid shape. That's how you even pronounce that word. So now I want to move on to one more uh, interesting problem that you can talk about with roller coaster loops, and it's slightly more um, difficult. So we're going to work on a circular loop here, but again, okay, in reality, roller coasters are for the most part um, going to be um, elliptical style loops. But what about the input velocity for um, your roller coaster car? So in other words, how do I figure out how fast I need to be rolling in order to make it through the loop? Okay, now you can't just say this, well, V is obviously equal to GR. Yeah, that's true, but that has to be at the top of the loop, right? So the velocity here has to be higher than the critical velocity because as you roll up the loop, you're going to slow down. So the question is, how do I figure out my input velocity to make it up and over the top of the loop? So again, we've got r. So then our height over here is 2r, okay? So now what we have to say is we have to have ek coming in, and ek has to be high enough such that it both makes it to the top of the, of the loop and has enough velocity, which is found inside a secondary EK with that velocity in that EK equal to root of GR. So let's start to break this down and see what we get. So we have to have one half MV squared. That's my input velocity. It has to supply me with MG two times r, right? There's two r's there, so two r height, okay? Plus the critical velocity at the top of the loop. All right, so let's do our little substitution that we did before. One half mv squared equals mg two r plus one half m um, root g r squared this, 1 half mv squared equals mg2r plus 1 half mgr. Mass can go away. Galileo would like that. Okay, now we get this. Do it that way. Okay, algebra it up. Saw that before, but we're not quite done. Okay, multiply both sides by 2 and root it out. So your velocity has to be equal to the root of 5 times g times the radius. The end.